Hi, it's currently 8 o'clock. I got Ava to bed at about 7.45, a little on the early side, but she was exhausted with her full day of school. Well, she's in there half a.m., but with her being around and all the activities she's had, physical activities, especially since she's in cheer and stuff too, she was ready for it. Now, you guys, um, she was being crabby downstairs, so I held her and I started singing her some Spanish Christian songs that I know that are kind of old school, and she fell asleep in my arms. And as I'm picking her up, I'm sitting on the sofa um, to the bottom of my step. This old song comes to my head. Um, sorry if I butcher the lyrics, but... Um, I'll put the title of the song down there. It's really old. I haven't heard it in forever, but I heard it clear as day, and I couldn't help but sing it to her as I'm walking her to her bed, and I'm listening, and it's God's message to me. Whew! And it goes something like, These times are troubled. These times are troubled. And these times are good, and they're always gonna be. They rise and they fall. We take them all the way that we should. But together you and I will be the ones to find out what forever is. When I said I do, I meant that I will till the end of all time. Be faithful and true, devoted to you. That's what I had in mind when I said I do. Truer than true, you know that I'll always be there for you. That's what I had in mind when I said I do. And there's more lyrics you can go ahead and pull up. I wonder if I can split screen this. Probably not. <laughs> Probably should have split screened it before. But yes, these uh, lyrics I will... Uh, put down in the description box I'll put the song and you can look the lyrics up and, and listen to it yourself and then as I'm singing her that I send her to bed tucked her in, kissed her and I hear Ephesians 3 to 5 so I read Ephesians 3 to 5 and if there were people that I don't know, I guess view this and are questioning um how God communicates with me, it basically is letting you know there. Um, in my last video, I basically said how I have an addiction to the Lord and how the only way to separate me from him is, I guess, through death. But even then, I'd be with him in spirit, just not this body. I don't know. But anyways, Ephesians 3, it says, For this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles, Surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you. That is the mystery made known to be my, to be by revelation, as I have already written for you. In the reading, this then you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to people in other generations, as it has been sorry, revealed by the spirit of God's holy apostles and prophets. What is the one thing that can stop you from uh, having a connection to the Lord? Faith. When Jesus was here, you have a bunch of people that are like shouting Jesus and without him, you know, I wouldn't have have all these worldly whatever and whatever. But you know what? Also knowing God and, and standing by him also brings you a lot of trials and tribulations too. I mean, how many people actually loved Jesus when he was here? How many people actually love him now? But you have people standing up for prisoners Right? Standing up for, uh, <laughs> immoral sexual things. Right? But when we come to salvation, when we come to love, when it comes to faith, when it comes to forming a relationship with our creator, we, we 
I think it's the God complex in us. I think that without him, we'd be anything. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles. Me, in reference to being God's prisoner, is the fact that I said in that last video, does it matter how they a, a, a society wants to try to record me and control me uh, and manipulate uh, people into believing certain things about culture, about religion, about standards, about morals, about ethics, about rules, about policies, about legislations, about politics. At the end of the day, my mind is free and the person that has control over that is the Lord. And it's literally an, like a never-ending me waking up and thinking about God, me going to bed and thinking about God. When I'm going through something, the first thing I do is go to my father. Lord, what should I do? What should I do next? And there are people that want to take place of that and control and try to tell people and put fear into them. So that way they can, you know, be the ones to lead your life. But they're the same ones that can't hold a marriage together, right? They're the same ones that are like abusive parents, right? Manipulative people that are, that don't even love themselves, right? But we're going to put our power and authority to these people. Oh, but I have a degree, a doctorate's degree. You graduated. How many people have you performed surgery on? Science is the study of. It doesn't mean that you know that that is for sure what's right. That what happens for Linda is going to happen for Karen the exact same way. That she's going to be as responsive to this medicine. There could be a situation where you give medicine to a person that wasn't allergic to it. And yet some kind of a reaction happens with whatever. And you don't know. As much as we like to play God, we aren't. I'm not a prisoner of this world. I am God's prisoner. I am God's servant. He is my advisor. He is my authority. I follow his ways. He is the truth. He is the light. I want to be able to see where I'm going. I don't want to fumble. I don't want to miss something that was meant for me. Surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you. That's my testimony. Any of the words that I speak, that is the mystery made known to me by revelation. The revelation coming from scripture, revelation coming from dreams, revelation coming from strangers, revelations coming from the web, revelations coming from people I just met. I get revelations through all kinds of ways because God speaks to us and is constantly with us all, all the time trying to get our, our, our attention and we continue to ignore him, right? You continue to turn your head and question rather he's real instead of just believing and trusting and confiding because it's easier for you to be afraid than it is to be brave, right? As I have already written for you, that is the mystery made known to me by revelation. As I have already written briefly, in reading this, then you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ which is not made known to people in other generations as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. We are coming into the age where people are waking up and people are understanding who they are in Christ and they are understanding their relationship with Christ and that we are not separate. People are being able to actually communicate with him and talk to him more openly. Why do you think they are pushing agendas on us so hard now? Why do you think that they want to count us, right? Censors. Censor us. Why do you think they want to keep track of all these people? You think they care about the, 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 the population? They're worried? You think they care about you? But you're so worried about your money that you're willing to sacrifice your freedoms, right, for false promises. Because 
It doesn't matter if your house is on Beverly Hills, on Hollywood. If that goes on fire, so do your belongings, right? doesn't matter if you can afford a little place over in Hawaii for a couple thousand, right? It still burnt to the ground, didn't it? And I don't mean to be insensitive, but the truth of the matter is, is we want money and we want material things and we're so caught up in this world and this illusion, right? That we'll ever be satisfied by any of it as long as we are serving a person, right? As long as we are letting a congressman, a politician, a false prophet lead our life, we are never going to be satisfied. We are light beings. We are not just mammals here without a conscience of what we need to do. But when we ignore that because we're so busy trying to play a part in this ideology society right we become stagnant broken materialistic and we may look on the screen like we have it all together and we have nothing because we have no faith we have no love in ourself right <laughs> all material things burn all of it all of it, none of it means anything. When you're with the Lord, he literally will pull through for you even when the circumstances seem like he won't. I dare you. I dare you. I triple doggy dare you to speak to the Lord. And then I triple doggy dare you to have faith that he'll answer that. I triple doggy dare you to believe in the Lord. Ephesians 3 to 5. Amen.